Hey everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I look kind of very rough. And uh, so basically this week I got my COVID booster shot on Monday. And uh, yeah, I know that some people, you know, when they hear about the COVID shots, they expect some kind of story like, oh, my arm fell off or, you know, I I nearly died or something like something dramatic like that. And I think like it, these kind of, you know, uh, very severe cases happen in, in very, very few people. Like, unfortunately, yeah, some people are predisposed to, you know, reacting badly to, to any vaccine, really. Uh, anyway, I got it on Monday. Um, I felt fine on Monday. I, I even exercised as usual. Uh, Tuesday was not very great. I felt a little bit, I had a bit of fever, uh, like 37. And uh, I felt a, just a bit of nausea. Um, but it's, it's hard to describe because usually when I have nausea, I, I like don't have appetite. I don't want to eat. And, and that was actually, I felt that way. But during dinner time, I just ate as usual. And nothing happened afterwards. Uh, of course, I... I got pretty tired because uh, the arm still hurts a lot. That's the one thing about the COVID shots that is a constant with me is that my arm always hurts, you know, the, the, the pretty much the night, that same night, and then a few days after as well. So as a result, you end up sleeping on one side. I can't really sleep on my back because, yeah, it's, it's just not very comfortable. Um, when I was younger, actually, I used to sleep often on my stomach, but, uh, I still do that actually now, but I don't know. It depends on the night. Like some nights I just don't feel like doing it. And so, yeah, if you sleep on one side, you don't get very good sleep. And, uh, I got, I was pretty tired these two to three days. Uh, now it's pretty much fine. I just have still a little bit of pain in my arm, but overall it's okay. So definitely nothing dramatic. Uh, and uh, yeah, look, for me personally, I really hope that that is the final shot I ever have to get. Well, at least as far as COVID is concerned. And for me, the reason is not because you know, I don't trust the science or I don't trust the doctors. No, I mean, I if the doctors advise, you know, this is the steps you should do, uh, me not being a doctor, uh, I have to follow the evidence, right? So if they say that, if it's, if it's well-researched, then okay, I will do that. But for me, the main problem is that I have a very severe uh, fear of needles, and I was actually trying to find it on uh, Google. And I first searched for trypophobia, but that was not it. Trypophobia is actually a fear or some kind of revulsion to seeing holes. So certain things have holes in them. And that makes some people very, very uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know. I might have that as well. Uh, the picture that was on Wikipedia is not very, uh, I don't know, it's very not very nice picture, let's say. So anyway, you can check it out if you want, but just be warned. Uh, what I have is actually called trypanophobia, and that's the intense fear of needles. And if you uh, read the article, I'm just going to jump down uh, to, to the part that I want to show, showcase here. And uh, I'll just quote here. It says, although most phobias are dangerous to some degree, needle phobia is one of the few that actually kill. In case of severe phobia, the drop in blood pressure caused by the vaso vasovagal shock reflex may cause death. In Hamilton's 95 review article on needle phobia, he was able to document 23 deaths as a direct result of vasovagal sho shock uh, during a needle procedure. So again, we're not talking about some kind of mad number of deaths. Uh, it's 23 as of 95. Uh, I'm not sure when that was started, though. 
Uh, so yeah, but it does happen, and I know that in like some people, even like very strong and fit people, they report uh, sometimes fainting, um, you know, feeling dizzy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, especially when uh, doing a blood test, because you literally extract your life juice if you want, uh, and that I can see that happening. Uh, for me, definitely, blood test is a big no-no. Um, but yeah, for me, what happens is that usually, well, especially during the blood test, right? I feel the thing. I feel the needle. Uh, they take it out. Uh, what often happens is that a few seconds later, I start to really hear and feel my heartbeat. Like it, it goes to my head. Like I can really feel it. Like doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, and it gets stronger and stronger. Uh, and then I faint. But what happens in my case is that because of that, you know, phobia and, you know, strong reaction, uh, my heart can actually stop, and uh, that was actually documented once already. So they had to resuscitate me. And you know, I'm not that old, obviously, as you can see. So it's not like I'm an old man who, uh, you know, needs that. But uh, I was, I think the, the last time it happened, I was probably 35, I guess. So again, not that old, you know. Anyway, so that that is why I hope. Uh, I don't have to take any more uh, COVID shots. So I uh, just want to briefly talk about my upcoming projects here. So again, I have my book out on Amazon. Put it here. Uh, there's a couple of books actually on Amazon, but this is the one that you really want because, okay, basically I have uh, Parallel Experiments and then the sequel, um, Beyond the Obscure. But my idea was like actually like bigger than doing those two separate books, so I I decided to put them both uh, into one book for for as well, so people can have this one if they just want to get the whole story. But they do have both books, okay? So basically, yeah, it's two books in one. Uh, so the separate books cost I think nineteen ninety nine. Uh, this one, I'm not sure, but I think it's like $26.99. So you're getting a huge discount, basically. And uh, also that is on discount as well, because it used to be $29.99. Uh, what this book is about, and I'm trying so hard to promote it, guys. Like, you have no idea how hard it is for in independent uh, book writers to promote shit these days. Like, it's really, really tough. Not because it's bad, but because the market is oversaturated. There are literally like hundreds of thousands of books every year. And like good luck getting found out, you know. Uh, recently, I'm trying some Instagram promotions. And some people said also TikTok is worth it. So I'll check out TikTok, but I have not done it yet. So Instagram promotion, yes, there was one done. Uh, but so far, I didn't get any sales from it, though. So yeah. Uh, anyway, this book, it's hard to describe because obviously it's not like a continuous novel. It's more kind of uh, three short stories and one longer story. Uh, but it's basically science fiction. It's psychological thriller. Uh, it's also psychological horror. Uh, and I do focus a lot on female characters. Um, I was watching the... I'm watching right now the uh, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial, right? And so Amber Heard was saying that uh, in Aquaman, well, obviously she was in Aquaman, and like she was asked, what's your character in Aquaman? And of course she said, well, I'm the love interest. And that is unfortunately kind of the typical trope of, uh, of actresses in general. Like they're usually the love interest and I always found that very lame and because, because it's been done ad nauseum, okay? So, like, seriously. Uh, so, for me, I, I do something very different. For me, like, the, the female characters are actually just regular characters. They don't just 
they're not just love interests. They're basically very actively involved. They're, they're the main characters. They do everything. Fighting, etc. So, yeah, my emphasis is on that. Because, again, we've had enough stories about men, etc. So it's time for, I would say, strong female characters. Yeah, that, that's what I enjoy doing. So check it out. I'll drop the link in the description. Uh, please support me. Like I said, it's really, really, really impossible, I think, to do any kind of promo because just people don't listen. Uh, people don't watch my videos, I'm sure. Uh, people are not paying attention to Instagram. Uh, probably no, uh, no, no TikTok, uh, TikTok, etc. So, yeah. Um, Please check out my digital art as well. Now, I do have a project with that uh, attached as well, but I can't really announce it just yet. It's a bit early. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be something related to that. But mainly, it's it's a lot of posters. And for me, like I live in an apartment where, as you can see, even like behind me over there, uh, basically my walls used to be just just white, plain white. Uh, behind me over there, I, I, it's hard to see right now because it's very, very dark. Uh, it's actually kind of a wallpaper of, of the universe. It, it's very nice. Uh, but, but that I had to do that by myself. Well, I had to ask people to do that. But anyway, it's very nice. It, it, it really kind of, um, it, it's a nice picture, you know, like in, uh, instead of a white, boring wall. So again, look. Here, my point is, if you like white walls, if you don't want anything on your walls, then by all means, keep your walls clean, etc., etc. I'm not forcing you to change your interior design. Uh, but if you're looking for some good art, if you're looking for some cool posters, uh, definitely check out my work because I do a lot of 3D uh, digital art but it's very it's very hard to describe actually because I use many many techniques and I can't reveal those obviously because they're kind of company secrets. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of techniques mixed together, and it makes the pictures very real. Like it's not just like three D because usually you can, if you look at uh, like a, a a typical let's say especially all days 3D image, you can clearly see that it's 3D, like everything is like sticking out and nothing is, is really blended together very well. But, uh, but that, that's, what, that's what I do. Like I blend things very well so that it looks like a, like a whole and not just something that sticks out um, and you can clearly distinguish you know, the depth of each element. No, this is this is a picture as a whole, and that's what I specialize in. So please check out my um, posters. If you like something, please consider getting it. It's on Redbubble, and I actually bought some of these uh, posters because I, I decorated some of my rooms with them uh, because, again, I do enjoy my own work as well. Obviously, if I didn't, I wouldn't do it. And I have to say the print quality is very, very good, okay? I usually order large, uh, so they're, I don't know how big they are, but they're they're pretty big. Uh, but anyway, the quality, the print quality is very good, so definitely don't worry about that. However, if you do have any issues with them, uh, this is beyond my control. Uh, this all belongs, well, I mean, the process itself belongs to Redbubble, so definitely if you have issues, maybe they uh, printed something badly, or there are some, some ink problems, uh, definitely contact them because that is really their responsibility. Me, uh, I just pretty much upload my work to them. That's, that's as far as I'm involved. Okay, so yeah, my book, my art, and uh, yeah, so I'm also planning, I, I'm, I started to, okay, so basically, yeah, I'm planning to do a video about my own case of domestic abuse. That's that is why I'm interested so much in the uh, Amber Heard, ver well, Johnny Depp because he's the one who filed the lawsuit. So Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard court case because I really want to see how it turns out. 
Uh, not that it affects... Well, that was a bit loud, sorry. Not that it affects my story at all, obviously. Uh, but I just want to see how it turns out and like how the jury, what the jury decides. I'm just curious to see. Uh, but I do have a story to tell. Uh, it, it's kind of an old story now. Well, it's, it's about 20 years old. Uh, but it's a story worth telling. And right now I'm just kind of, I'm in the process of uh, gathering evidence. I'm, you know, looking through old, very old logs. I'm trying to find some uh, things in chat, etc. that I can, I can show to people. So what I have to say here is that most of the very kind of juicy stuff was towards the end of that period. And I, I don't have any records from that at all because I know that it was mostly over Skype and I don't have any logs from Skype from those days, unfortunately. I only have logs from MSN for some, for some reason. Uh, and they only go as far as middle of 2005 or so. So, yeah. But there is some stuff in there which is interesting. And uh, definitely if you're interested in, uh, you know, th psychiatry and psychology, uh, it will be interesting to look at. And, uh, yeah, I just want to kind of tell my story. And, uh, you know, again, abuse takes many different forms. It's not just physical. It's not just, you know, beating the shit out of each other. That, that is definitely a part of it. Uh, but there's also psychological abuse. There is uh, verbal abuse, etc., etc. So, and that, that was mostly my, that, that was mostly my case. Uh, so I will try to, to tell my story. Uh, I will uh, show examples using the, the chat logs. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of it. I'm also uh, working on some gaming videos. I know I've been a bit on hold on that, but I did a whole playthrough of Prey, the uh, 2017 version. This is all available on uh, my YouTube gaming channel. So again, link is in the description. Uh, do check it out. It's basically like a lot of footage, let's say, uh, maybe per, let's say just for, uh, as an example, like you have a stage, right? Which is a whole map and maybe it took me an hour to get through it, but the final cut, the final edit of that would maybe, maybe be like something like 15 to 20 minutes. So it's, it's very easy to digest for people because people don't want to stay for a long time. Okay. That I understood a long time ago. Uh, but if it's short clips, uh, if if they're kind of fun and interesting, then okay. In the case of Prey, it's a game which is moved forward through reading. Well, not well. Actually, yeah, there is a bit of reading as well, but it's mostly audio logs from the the crew of the station, and you you have to listen to them because you know they tell you about what happened. So usually, when a log is playing. I, I just left it playing so so people can get really the whole story uh, instead of me running around and shooting stuff. But yeah, some of my funny deaths are in there. And uh, anyway, I try to make it as fun as possible, but in my own kind of way. Uh, because again, gaming video market is way oversaturated on YouTube. Uh, everybody can do it these days. So uh, I kind of do my own my own way, which is... Maybe not, uh, I don't know. It, it's not like extroverted. It's more kind of introverted way, but uh, just, yeah, kind of a serious playthrough giving my honest opinions. All right, that's it uh, for the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, check out my work. That That is really, you know, the most important part about this page, etc. It's basically about promoting myself, right? So yeah. And uh, take care, uh, stay safe, and I'll see you around.